God bless you and everyone is very welcome. We thank God for your lives, for the wonderful things that the Lord God is doing in your lives. We have a word from the living God today that is titled, The expectation of the wicked shall not prosper. The expectation of the wicked shall not prosper. The expectation of the wicked shall not prosper. This message is going to be part of the series of our spiritual warfare type of messages. So, in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 10 and the verse is 28. There is a statement that God made. The Lord said, the hope of the righteous shall be gladness. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. So it is very simple. It is not what is going through your mind. It is what God says about what the wicked does. The wicked is in position of expectation unto wickedness. That's one thing that every child of God must understand. You cannot decide to change Satan. You cannot decide to change the nature of the witch. You cannot decide to change the nature of the evil. This is what God says they are. So God himself says that the wicked's expectation is something that is evil. And the Lord said, it shall not come to pass, but it shall perish through God's power. In the book of Acts, Acts 23, and the verse is 12 to 15. Acts 23, verse 12 to 15. This message, all of us are going through situations like this. When that day of evil comes, you must know how to act. And you must understand the spiritual principles that governs our lives so that you will not stand out there and shake hands with the devil when he's taking you to your grave. The conspiracy against Apostle Paul, it is, you know, the Bible is the book of life. The reason why the stories are written as they are written in the Bible, so when you are reading a story about Paul, when you are reading a story about Peter and everyone else, it is not just what happened to them or what they went through, but it is because it's a spiritual principle. It's a spiritual principle that every child of God is prompt to go through it. Every child of God, you might be prompt to go through this. So when it is there, don't think that, oh, this is what happened to Paul and uh, it cannot happen to me. It is past. No. It's a prototype. It happened and God had it written down so that you and I, we can read it to live our lives accordingly. So the Bible, as I keep saying, I said, it is the word of God written down by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. That is what the word of God says. By the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that caused man to write or men to write, or people of God to write, and they put down, and what is written here in the Bible, you know, the word says that, that all that Jesus did, it is not everything that is written here. So you can, you can see that the things that Almighty God himself had selected according to many things that happened to the, the, his, his prophets, his servants, and have selected some of their stories, and cause the Holy Spirit to put them together in the form of a book called the Bible, which is the book of life. It is because of the spiritual principle that governs heaven and earth. Heaven and earth. So we, we approach the Bible, the stories of the Bible, as not just a mere story, but kingdom principles, doctrines that one must live his life and be aware of it 
And when you are going through this, you take counsel out of how they acted according to the word of the living God. Written word of the living God. So don't hear the, 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 the Bible story and just say that, oh, this is how it happened and then that's it. You have to take it as life counsel. Life what? Counsel. It will guide you. It will guide you through life. So there was, there was a conspiracy against Apostle Paul. Acts 23, we said from 12 to 15. The word says that, he said, when it was day, certain of the Jews bounded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. Certain of the Jews, they came together under a curse. In, in other words, under oath, they sworn against themselves. They said, until we have killed Paul, we will not go, or we will go hungry. No food, no drink. And we are talking about the principle that governs the wicked world. We said the, the expectation of the wicked shall perish. This is what they, they expect to do concerning Paul's life. So the principle is that when the enemy had spotted you as a threat to the kingdom of darkness, these things, these are what they plan to do. They can come together and say that, hey, minister of God, you also want to come in and save people unto God's kingdom. You wait. This is the world. And this is my world. And Jesus said it. The prince of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. So he has absolute right to fight anyone that is in this world. God has given him that right because God said, it is not time yet. He has a time. He has every right. Satan has every right to continue doing what he has been called to do. I said what he has been called to do. Do not think that the oppressions of Satan is outside God's, God's power. That is what he has been called to what to do. Satan cannot conspire in heaven and be thinking that, oh, uh, the Bible says that his conspiration in heaven led him here. God cast him down here. He doesn't want to be here, but he came here because of the power that governs heaven. He is on assignment. So the principle has not been changed. Everyone that will shake hand with the devil, everyone that will shake hand with the, with the works of darkness, every power that will be fellowshipping with darkness will have the same way of operation. The same way of operation. So when they have targeted you as the source of their wickedness, they will not rest until they have seen it accomplished. They will not rest until they have seen it accomplished. And this is exactly, you know, you might just come and read such a story and say that, oh, this is what certain Jews did to Paul. That was Paul's time. It has nothing to do with Paul. It has everything to do with the spiritual principles that governs the children of God's life. And you must be aware of it. So in verse 13 of Acts 23, he said, these people that have sworn to themselves that they will not eat and drink until they have killed Paul, there were more than 40 which had made this conspiration. There were more than what? 40. For only one man. For only one man. You know, these people have gone to the extent that their lives are also in line. Because they said, we will not eat. And they are people... They are not spirit beings, so they are people. They are people. That the devil is using them. So not only the devil can use these vessels and destroy them because how long would a man keep going without food and drink? But they said that they have made an oath, a curse upon themselves. Until they see Paul dead, 40 people, 40 men. And these are Jews. 
His own people. Sometimes we, we, you know, we, we just want to, you know, side <laughs> and try to comfort ourselves. Saying that, no, my people cannot do this. It has nothing to do with your people. It has everything to do with the spiritual principles that governs our lives. So, my own brother, my own sister can do this. Let me tell you. When the evil spirit is at work, they can do it beyond your expectation. They can do it beyond your expectation. Oh, this is what the word of God tells us. His own people. 40 men. Now, these 40 people, what did they do? Verse 14 of Act 23. He said, they came to the chief priest and the elders and said, we have bound ourselves under a great curse that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. So you see that, that you, you, you can see the structure that is in place. This is what is called satanic structure. Satanic structure. These 40 people coming to the priest and the elders with such assignments, one would be thinking, I said, okay, why, why would you, why would you, why do you want to kill Paul? No, this is not the right thing to do. In the higher height, it has also been decided that this must come to pass. So, watch this. Uh, you know what it means? When it is said that way, <laughs> some people are living in this life and be thinking that, they said, I have not done anything to the evil, so evil cannot get me. This is what is happening here. So, they said, when someone would take me to the fetus, when someone would take my picture, my name, my, my, my home, my marriage, my children, to the fetish priest, nothing will happen to me because I have not done anything. The fetish, they will judge and know that I am innocent and they will not do anything against my life. Lie, lie. I am telling you, this is a great lie from the pit of hell. Because the wicked does not need anything to operate. It is his nature. It is his nature. So that is why we have in our, in our world today a lot of places that people are using curses. I curse you in the name of such a river, which is a demon operating right there. I curse you in the name of such a fetish, which is a demon operating out there. And it will work. How does it work? The river and that, you know, fetish is somewhere in a remote area. The network of the devil. The network of the devil. Devil is not God. He is not omniscient. He cannot be in two places at the same time. He will not, he will not even know what you are thinking. But he is a man of full deception. Full of deception. He is the man full of deception and great wisdom because God, among people, the Lord looked at Daniel and said, there is no wiser man than Daniel, but Satan is wiser than Daniel. Satan, God said, said Satan is wiser than Daniel. The Lord gave him full wisdom, full wisdom to operate. So what he does not have, he has the ability to imagine, imagine what might be people's reaction, people's thought. And then he's great in throwing thoughts, ideas. That is why he said, cast out imaginations because they are not from me. This is one of the weapons of children of God. We casting out every imagination because God knows that it's a ground that Satan can use to bring somebody down. As they go into the higher, higher height, to go for, you know, seeking for approval to terminate your life. They have already made the decision that they're going to kill you, Paul. But they have gone to the elders and the priest seeking for approval. Well, 
Let's see what, you know, how it goes. Uh, so, in verse 15 of Acts 23, the word says, Now, therefore, ye with the council, signify to the chief captain that he bring him down unto you tomorrow, as though you would inquire something more perfectly concerning him. And we, or ever he come here, are ready to kill him. Hallelujah. This is the situation. So basically they said, okay, uh, this is what we are going to do. We are going to take upon ourselves that we, 40 people, are the ones that killed Paul. Council of priests and elders, don't worry. There won't be anything against you. We, 40 men. But we need your cooperation. We need you to bring Paul in this council here onto your regular assignment. Start questioning him about what he's doing, trying to bring children of God or trying to bring people to Christ. And then when he will be here, we will come in and kill him. This is what we have just read. We will come in, come in and kill him. You know what it means? What it means is exactly what we were saying before. The one who has taken your picture, the item, your name, and everything else to the fetish priest. Who is going to do the killing? The same evil spirit behind it. But now, you know how they, they react. Their reaction is that, oh, okay, I am just doing my work. But this is the greatest desire of Satan himself. Now that you have found fault against your own brother, against your own sister, now that, and, and that matter of fact, some of the situations, it's not because you are at fault. It is because of unviness and everything else that you can imagine going through people's mind. That will empower them to do evil against you. The enemy gets holds of it. He's not going to say that, but I look into the situation and this man is totally innocent. None of the council of the elders or the priest ever said, please, we don't want to be part of this. Take your stuff out. Let me tell you, every time that they will take your name onto the evil place, evil is ready to cooperate and kill you. Evil is ready to cooperate and kill you. So if you are here as a child of God and your mind is that, oh, I'm a child of God and uh, I haven't done anything to nobody, so... Whatever that anyone and you know, whatever that anyone will take me, it will not work. And you are just mangling yourself. You are not doing the right thing in the sight of God. They will kill you, and they will come to your funeral and cry upon your dead body. Spiritual principles for the children of God to come up on a higher height. We serve God in wisdom. God doesn't, you know, one thing we said it, and we know this. He does not work against man's will. So when man has decided not to follow the kingdom principles that sustains one's life over this world here, Satan has every right to kill you. Satan has every right to kill you. The priesthood prayer that he prayed in John 17, Jesus made a statement. He said that, Father, the work and the people that you gave me, when I was here, I kept them in thy name. My assignment is over. I'm coming now. They are here, but they are not from the world. They are in the world, but they are not from the world. My prayer, Lord, is to keep them away from the evil one. So any room that a child of God will open for the enemy to operate, he has absolute right to keep you in that bandage. How can the Bible talk about lawful captives? How can the Bible talk about the lawful captives? It is only when we come and we cry upon the living God that God is redeeming the lawful captives. Lawful captives meaning that they have done something that had led the enemy right to oppress them and keep them in that bandage. But it is by the mercies of God that God will come in and take people out of the situation. A lot of people have just thrown themselves to the den of the devil to the captives, to the captivity of Satan. And their lives are captured, but they just don't know. Living dead around.
We are ready to kill him. So, let me move on to another example. That's all that I'm going to do today. The book of Acts, Acts chapter 2. And let me read from verse 1 to 5. We will break down the, 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 the story. The word says, he said, now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. Herod the king decided to go against the apostles of God. And he killed James. He stretched forth his, his hands. He caught James and he killed James. So now, the reason is that the Bible says that he said because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Okay. <laughs> it's so interesting. The king has gotten hold of James, an apostle of the church of Christ. The Bible says that the Jews, they look into the situation and they were pleased with what Herod, representing what Satan is actually doing. Let me tell you, the situation, do not think that everyone is at peace with you. And this has nothing to do no matter how good you are to people. It's just a spiritual principle that governs life. How can you get hold of James and kill James and the Jews, his own brethren? Realize that what he has done is great. Hey, it meaning that when you will be going through hardship or when the enemy might come and terminate your life, somebody will be out there rejoicing of what had happened. Why would the person rejoice? It is simply because they are already against the church. They are already against the church. So in other words, they are already against the life that you are living. They are already, there is something in your life that there is that people that you do not have any idea that they are already against it. You can't verify these things. You cannot, it wouldn't, we wouldn't have known Unless Herod killed James, that the Jews, the Jews will be against their own brother. The Jews will be against their own brother. So sometimes, uh, <coughs> last Friday we were talking about it. When some of these messages, when you preach them, it's like, are you trying to destroy the family? No, it is not we are trying to bring contention in our families. The reality of the word of God is what it is. Jesus made a statement. He said the four of a man is in his household. The four of a man. He said the enemy number one of a man is from his own household. Number one. Before you go out there and say that Lord, anybody. That's why we pray the prayer. We pray that prayer. Any power from my father's house. From my mother's house. Seeking for my downfall. Let the earth be open and swallow it in the name of Jesus Christ. You have to start your prayer from that point. When you start the prayer of attack. Because what you might be thinking that they are doing it from afar. Might be someone that is so close to you and know you very well. And when they know you very well, they know how to bring you down. They do, they do know how to what? Bring you down. Because they know you. They know your strength. And they know your weaknesses. They know your strength and they know your weaknesses. They know where you'll be coming from. Where they must just be awaiting for you to slay you. It pleased them to hear that James is killed. Uh -huh. And Herod saw it. Herod 
saw it, that it pleased the people what he has done. So in verse 4 of Acts 12, Herod, when he had apprehended, apprehended him, he put him in prison. Remember what, what we, 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 where, where we are coming from. He killed James. He saw he pleased the Jews, so he got hold of Peter. He killed James. He saw he pleased the Jews, so he got hold of Peter. I'm also going to kill Peter for a higher fame. He got hold of Peter and he put Peter in prison and delivered him for four containers of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Hallelujah. Intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. This one is even, <laughs> your own people shall judge you. Crucify him. Crucify him. But you are the breadwinner for the family. Let me tell you, that day when they would take you to the evil council to bring forth a judgment against your life, the ones that you are feeding them are the same ones that would just say, crucify him and kill him out of our sight. This is how it works. The reason why the fetish are just taking that much height it's because people are working with them. The reason why shrines are functioning even in the era of the church as of today because we have people that are still clients to them. Worshippers of the devil, agents of darkness taking assignments to them. And when they have gotten hold of you, by the way, devil is not ready to let you go. You saw what he did with Peter. He delivered Peter to four containers of soldiers. One man. One man. One man. The principle behind it is that if they have gotten hold of you, it will take God's power to take you out. It will take God's power to take you out. Uh, if you are gotten hold by the witches and you go to a fetish priest for deliverance, let me tell you, they will even lock you more. The same network, the same network, evil is one. To only two kingdoms are operating under the surface of this earth. The kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. Either you are in one, and if you are not in the light, automatically you are in darkness. Either you know it or not, it doesn't matter. What matters is the reality of your life. So, and this is not something that you need somebody to tell you. You living your life and knowing that you are not standing with God, automatically you are standing with the devil. And matter of fact, he will not worry you. That is why your life is shallow. Shallow. And he will continue. He said the prince of this world had blinded the mind of them that they would not come to the light. Whatsoever that he must, he must use to keep you in that state that you will not go to the light, he will keep you there. If your thing is sports cars, if your thing is football, if your thing is sleeping, if your thing is money, the enemy will empower it, bringing forth a greater love that you will be worshipping it. You will be worshipping it. It will be time, time to come to church and we'll be calling pastor for, with reasons. Pastor, I cannot make it today. I have headache. The message of God is that when you say you have headache, God doesn't give you headache. And Satan will not bother you because since you are already fellowshipping and helping him, you will not have headache. But the day that you will decide to come to church, you have made your mind that tomorrow morning I'm going to church by God's grace. That day, hell will break loose. Whatever that they have to do to prevent you from coming to the light, they have to do it. And the world will cooperate with you. The world will cooperate with you. That day, 
There will be a marathon. That day, there will be a great program on the TV. That day, that soccer program, Barcelona against uh, Chelsea. Ah, I cannot miss this one. Church time, church will wait next week. Peter now is in prison. Peter now is in prison. The word says in verse 5 of Acts 12, he said, Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but we thank God, prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for Peter. Hallelujah. Prayer was made without ceasing unto God from the church. You see, the reason why nobody can deliver you except Almighty God. So if you do not have anyone that is standing for you when you are locked in spiritual prisons, I have been saying this things all the time. I know this. The one that is in prison cannot free himself. The one that is locked in spiritual prisons cannot free himself. That is one thing that the church have not understood it. We come here and we are dancing. I mean, no prayer life during the week. What type of church are you talking about? The church is called to free people. It is not your evangelism in the world out there and say they're giving the tracks and say, come, 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 that they will come. Hey, prayer must go forth to deliver them. God himself said this. He said, nobody can come to me except I draw him. Except the church, the church will come together and scattered the prisons of darkness and free people, then the gospel of Christ can reach out to them. Otherwise, you saw it yourself. Herod did not keep uh, Peter in his little dungeon over there. He delivered him to four contagious of soldiers to keep him and are waiting for a special time to terminate his life. The word says that he said he saw it pleased people so he's waiting for Easter. Easter. Do you know what Easter represents? <laughs> Easter. Passion of Christ. The hand is against the church. But they that are against the church the time of their celebration that is the time that we are going to bring forth Peter to be killed. Then they shall know that this is we did that to James. We are also going to do this to you. And then the next, so you see, this is it. This is when they said, we don't know what is going on in our families. My senior brother died at the age of 42. My junior sister died at the age of 30. My, 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 my the little one who is also at the university, they just buried him one month ago and he was only 29. What is going on in our families? Let me tell you, unless somebody will stand and start calling upon the name of the living God, the enemy is not ready to let go. They that he had captured. The purpose of darkness was against the church. Maybe a forefather has made a covenant with them. And it is something that is running in the lineage of the, of, the, of, of the family. So a bloodline. You don't have to do anything to be part of it. You do not have to do anything. Because the guys, you know, Satan holds a legal document to kill you. He holds a legal document to frustrate your life. To hold the womb of your, you know, of, of your marriage. He has a legal document. Unless someone will come to understanding of the spiritual principle that governs this life here, you can live your life as a victim, frustrated, not knowing what to do, and some are even committed suicide. The least of it all is to live, to live with fear, great fear. Two of our people have died. Another one that is also in abroad, they are also gone. And this one also, but what is... So you are living, I might be next. I might be next. That is the great fear that the enemy... So you are not dead yet, but you are living as a dead person. Fear. I 
I pray for somebody here. Any power that have gotten hold of whatever that they have against you, reserving it for a special occasion, I come against it in the name of Jesus Christ. Peter must be killed in Easter. But the Lord will not allow this to happen. He said the expectation of the wicked shall not prosper. So in the book of Acts, Acts 12 and the verses 6 to 8, he said, when Herod would have brought Peter forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between the two soldiers, bound with chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. You know why they will not come out? Can you see the reason why you cannot escape when they have gotten hold of you? Already Peter is in prison, but watch what is happening in that prison. In that prison, that is the fortress of the devil. The Bible says that Peter was sleeping and he was already sleeping between two soldiers. These were not prisoners. They were soldiers in prison to keep you. Inside the prison were soldiers. They were also keeping inside the prison. We are not talking about the door or outside the building. Inside. He's sleeping between two soldiers that were keeping him. Not only that, Peter is bound with chains. So when we stand out there and we start praying, Every chain of the devil against our lives break in the name of Jesus. Something is happening. Because that is how they do operate. The man is sleeping. You already have two soldiers on his, on, on, on his side. The Bible lets us understand that he was chained in the prison. In the prison. Some of these things, you know, when we are bringing forth such messages, because some of us, we see the reality of it. We see the spiritual reality of it that people do not have any idea of what is going on in the realm of the spirit. And they move in the physical realm, thinking that all is well, when matter of fact, everything is wrong. If the Lord will open your eyes to see your spiritual state, you might be pitying yourself. They cannot come to pray. They cannot fast. They are taking the things of God as one of these things. Your life is in danger. It's not because you are doing well in life, uh, having money, children are doing well, this and that, that you are okay. We are operating in two different worlds. The one that is the reality is the spiritual world. Hebrews 11, 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. That the things that we see, they are not made of things which do appear. What you see, what you are doing in the physical realm, that's not what it is. This is for you to just entertain yourself and keep, your, you know, keep yourself in your blindness. The reality of you is a spiritual state that you, you're going to have to find out. The day that God will come to you and show you something about yourself. Pastor, I saw myself and I was in the room and there was so much darkness around me. And I didn't know I was trying to locate the door and I was not able to see the door. <laughs> and, I said, and then what happened? He said, that, that's all. I said, you are still in that room, you better do something about your situation because God is telling you that you are locked in spiritual prison. You found yourself in such a situation. The name of Jesus is completely ignorant to you. The blood of Jesus, you never heard it. The enemy, by the way, you are not even alone in that room. If God will be opening your eyes in that room, you will see that the enemy also have soldiers to keep you in that room. You will not find that door. You will never find that door to go out. 
chains are put on the Peter. Mm. Not only the chains. So, remember where we are coming from. Peter is in the prison. Locked in the prison. Inside the prison, two soldiers are sleeping on his side. Not just that, Peter is chained right there in his sleep. And on top of it, the keepers before the door kept the prison. Hallelujah. At least we have mentioned three different protection from the devil to keep his captive in captivity. If you will be coming from the door, number one, as soon as you get to the door where, you know, the prison door where Peter is inside, soldiers are standing just right there. What do you want? Peter, you can't get Peter. You have to bypass us before you can get into this door. And the door is locked. You go inside. Peter is lying down there, chained. Soldiers, what do you want? We want this man. You can't have this man. You have to bypass us. Three straight protection. And the chain is there. This is the situation of Peter. In verse 7 of Act 12, to God alone be the glory. He said, Behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. The angel of the Lord. Remember the church is praying for Peter. Oh. The church is praying for Peter. The angel of the Lord came upon Peter and the light shined in the prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, arise up quickly. And the chains fell off from his hands and the angel said unto him, Guide thyself and bind up thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. Hallelujah. Arise, O Lord, and let my enemies be scattered. Arise, O Lord, and let my enemies what? Be scattered. We said it. It is only God that can free you from that situation. Look at what happened here. With all the security that is guiding Peter, the moment that the angel of God arrives in that room, that prison room, Bible says that the light shine. The light shine. Now, the type of conversation that the angel is having with Peter, it looks like nobody is in that room. He went there, tell Peter, Peter, wake up, Peter. Uh, Peter, put thy sandals. So they have already taken his shoes off. Peter, put your clothes. They have already put Peter naked. You see, <laughs> these are all part of the spiritual principle. How the enemy is really dealing with the souls. The shame and the reproach and nakedness that, that you are going through in life. It is the decoration of the devil. It is your prison garment. The same way that in the physical realm you go to prison and then they will change. He said, over here, we wear the same thing. You are a lawyer, it doesn't matter. Get this way. The angel said, recover now. Put your shoes together. Put your clothes together. We are living this place. Follow me. Nobody can get you out unless there is a call unto heaven. Nobody can get you out unless there is a call unto heaven. That is why the church cannot be sleeping. The church cannot be sleeping. The church is not only Sunday when we come and be sitting down here and be hearing the word, you know, the word of God. Absolutely not. The church is called to work with Christ. The church is called to what? To work with Christ. And who is the church? You and I. You and I. Call at the vineyard of the living God. You and I is the church. The body of Christ. You heard a woman of God stood here this morning and crying in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. 
please free our children from the hand of the wicked in this city of Chicago. The killings are too much. 500 souls just perish like that in shootings. If it was a bomb that blasted and killed 500 people, everybody would be alarmed. This time here, shootings are going on and 500 souls are dying and nobody cares. You better open your eyes and call upon heaven to save your children here. You are also on the land. You are here. It can happen to you. It can happen to your children. You cannot be saying that this is happening in south side. I'm on north side, so I'm okay. The enemy does not operate from north side or south side or east side. He operates in the world. And you are here. May the Lord have mercy upon us. Follow me, Peter. And in verse 11 of Acts 12, the word says that Peter was come to himself. He said, Now I know of surety that the Lord had sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod. And from all the expectation of the people of the Jews, now I know. I know for surety that God is with me. When the Lord will deliver you from that situation, that is the time that you will know that indeed your God is with you. If God will not come in, you will definitely perish. If God will not come in, you will what? Definitely perish. But we thank God for his mighty hand of grace and power upon our lives. I'm going to stop here. We have so much to say. But the essential has been given. We will be going to a second part of this message another time. It's a word of awareness that you will not take your life for granted. That you will not be cruising as a Christian. You will not be thinking that, oh, I am a child of God, God will do it. Come to the reality and start drinking from the real source. Let the Holy Spirit take absolute control of your life and start living unto God's glory. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless your purpose on this earth here. Everything that God has called you to do, receive the empowerment of the Holy Ghost to accomplish them all in the name of Jesus Christ. Any power that stands against your life because of the living God at work shall not stand in the name of Jesus May the Lord fight your battle. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Let's say amen. Amen. God bless you.